William Antisesericu, a prominent 18th century Fonti man, is best known for his wrongful enslavement in the West Indies and diplomatic mission to England. He was both prominent among the Fonti people and influential among Europeans concerned with the transatlantic slave trade. Anson was born c. 1736 in Anamabo, the then largest slave trading port on the Gold Coast, modern day Ghana. His father, John Carenti, was the head of Anambabo's government, and Chief Cabasir, one of the local officials responsible for supplying African slaves to European traders, and an important ally for anyone living or trading in the city. Accordingly, Ansa and his family were of interest to the many European polities competing for access to Anambabo's abundant trade. After sending Ansa's brother to France, John Carenti sent Ansa to England to gain an education, curry favor with the English and serve as his eyes and ears in Europe. The ship captain entrusted with Ansys transport, however, dishonorably sold him into slavery in Barbados before reaching England. Years later, a free Fonti trader discovered Ansa in Barbados and quickly alerted John Carenti of his son's fate. Carenti petitioned the British to free Ansa, and the Royal African Company, the English joint stock company operating the slave trade, liberated Ansa and transported him to England. In England, Ansel was received as a prince and gained the respect of London's high society. Most notably, he watched a live performance of Arunoko and, much to the audience's surprise, fled the theatre in tears. The play depicted a wrongly enslaved African prince who likely reminded Ansel much of himself. Upon returning to Anamabo, Ansel took up work as a writer at Cape Coast Castle, the primary British fortification on the Gold Coast. After leaving Cape Coast on bad terms, Ansa worked as a slave trader. The details of his death are unknown. Anamabo represented a major interest for European traders including the Dutch, Portuguese, Swedish, Danish, English, and French on the West African coast. In fact, Anamabo was the largest slave trading port on the Gold Coast of Africa. By Ansa's birth, however, the primary competitors for trade with the people of Anamabo were the French and English. While other commodities were traded in Mabo, the primary trade was in slaves. Still, the Fonti people of Anamabo rarely sold each other into slavery. The vast majority of slaves sold in Anamabo were acquired by the Fonti people from the African interior. It was governed by a small group of wise men known as Cabasiers, one of whom was deemed Grafo or Chief Cabasir the role John Carenti filled. While the Europeans in Anamabo were largely respected, the power undeniably rested in the hands of the African cabasiers. Still, the English exercised some control over the locals through their Fort William, and the French through their naval warships. John Carenti sent one of Ansa's brothers to France in the early 1740s, and that brother returned to Anamabo with a European education and extensive knowledge of France. Strengthening relationship with France, however, worried the English traders in Anamabo. In turn, the England's Royal African Company offered to host another of Carenti's sons. Carenti, eager to play England and France off of each other for Anamabo's benefit, quickly agreed to send Ansa. As a child, Ansa had spent extensive time in Fort William and, in the process, gained fluency in English and an appreciation for the nation's culture and traditions. Accordingly, Carenti chose to send him to England as soon as possible with Captain David Bruce Crichton aboard the Lady Carolina. 2. Enslavement at Captain David Bruce Crichton, however, betrayed Ansa's trust and sold him into slavery in Bridgetown, Barbados. John Carenti and the Fonti people fell out of contact with Ansa and presumed him dead. 5. In William Dodd's popular The African Prince, now in England, Tazara at his father's court. Ansa claimed the shouted prince is now a slave unknown. Ansa claimed that in groans, not sleep, he passed the weary night and rose to labor with morning light. Still, as John Carenti's son, Ansa was well known by the Fonti people, and he was discovered by a Fonti trader doing business in Barbados. Once the trader relayed news of Ansa's enslavement to Carenti, Carenti insisted that the British free Ansa and carry him the rest of the way to England. English trade had, during Ansa's enslavement, been suffering in Anamabo as Carenti blamed the nation for his son's presumed death. 
Not surprisingly then, the English were quick to jump on the opportunity to return to Carinthi's good graces. They liberated Ansa from slavery and transported him to England, where he was received as a the Prince of Anima Bodheim in England. The Ansa was received in England in 1748 as Prince William Ansa Cesaric or the Royal African. Under the protection of George Montague Dunk, 2nd Earl of Halifax, President of the Board of Trade, Ansa received privileged treatment in Britain for political and economic reasons. In fact, there exist many reports of his frequent appearances in London society. Most notably, he attended a showing of Arunoko, a play depicting the wrongful enslavement of an African prince and his wife by Europeans. The African prince, Arunoko, and his wife, Imorinla, are sold into slavery and transported to the West Indies where they are forced to work long hours alongside lowly slaves. When Imorinla becomes pregnant, Arunoko stages a slave rebellion. The rebellion ends poorly, however, and Arunoko is forced to kill Amorinda and is himself publicly executed. Given his kidnapping, and so likely related to Arunoko on a very basic level. In William Dodds the African Prince, now in England, Tazara at his father's court, Ansa claims, I can't recall the scene, tis pain too great when referring to Arunoko. Regardless, Ansa succeeded in garnering respect for himself and his people as civilized individuals. Many were impressed by his manners and graciousness. Ansa's to visit England was never meant to be permanent, so he returned home to his father and the Fonti people in 1750. He returned elaborately dressed in the latest style befitting his station with an English education and immense understanding of English culture. Furthermore, in Zara, at the court of Anemabo, to the African prince, when in England, Dodd's accompanying poem, and his lover repeatedly refers to London as Britain's happy shore and thereby suggests that the Fonti people and especially Ants have viewed England positively, especially after Ants's sojourn there. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe.